So I have you with me today, Pavel, and uh, today we're going to talk about Shiny Router and AppSidex. And just to give the people who are watching uh, a, a hint of what AppSidex is, if you've ever heard of the Pokedex, it's the Pokedex for Absalon employees. So what inspired AppSidex besides you know, what seems to be a genuine love for Pokemon? Hi, Deepanj. First of all, it's uh, great to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Um, the Epsidex is, well, before uh, I'm saying what inspired me to do to build the Epsidex, maybe a couple of words, a couple of words about the app itself. Yeah. So this is the demo application, which purposes to showcase the main features of Shiny Router, as you said, which is one of the open source packages created by Epsilon. However, the app is uh, built uh, also with, uh, with the help of other Epsilon packages. Rhino for project structure, Shiny Fluent for the UI. So uh, I like to say that this is also a demo of the Epsilon way of building Shiny apps. Uh, anyway, uh, the name Epsidex, as you precisely said, is the combination of words Epsilon and Pokedex. Uh, and the, I think that this title expresses the purpose of the app really well. So it's just having all Epsilonians at a glance in a very easy, funny, and engaging way. Um, there is a small history behind this app. You see, I joined Epsilon more than a year ago. And at Epsilon, we have this rite of passage uh, called the very first app sprint, which are bench tasks for new hires. And these tasks, these tasks are usually delivered by small teams of one to three, up to three. Well, you know that, obviously, <laughs> from one to three developers. And in this case, um, it was a team of one, me. And uh, the, the goal of the App Sprint was to create some kind of internal tool that would display uh, all the employees at Epsilon. And uh, so the AppSidex version 0 0.1 was born uh, one year, almost a little bit more than one year ago. Um, and recently, so uh, I've been tasked to create a demo application for Shiny Router, but I also noticed that there is a request to improve the original AppSidex app. And so I just thought this is a very nice opportunity to achieve two goals at once. And honestly, for me, it was a, a very unique experience, uh, almost like a lab experiment. Imagine you have two points in time with almost all conditions being the same. I mean, general idea behind the app, tech stack, deployment infra, et cetera, and only my expertise being a variable uh, in, this, in this equation. And it's fascinating to look at my past self, at my present self, and to see yeah. how much I've grown, how much I've changed, uh, and all that kind of stuff. Actually, now that I mentioned it, I think it would be a cool tradition at Epsilon to celebrate your first anniversary with, uh, by, by revisiting your very first app sprint or something like that. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a wonderful idea. You know, it's kind of like Pokemon evolution in that you gain the XP and then, you know, you evolve. It's, it's, exactly. it's, it's, it just works like that, you know. Uh, now that you've mentioned it, you know, uh, and I've, of course, I've used AppSidex. Uh, so do you think any other organization can also benefit from, uh, from something like this? Or, you know, if they could implement the same thing, probably? Yeah, absolutely. Besides the title, that is, I mean, <laughs> if you change the title more suitable to, to the other organization, I think it absolutely makes sense to have such app. Yeah. Uh, in fact, the rationale behind having this app developed uh, is the ever-growing team of Epsilon. And considering the remote first policy of, of the company, and there are people from across all the globe who all work remotely, and in such setup, getting to know each other is a big challenge. Uh, so, and hopefully this is what AppSidex is trying to solve. Uh, so anytime I want, I can just go to the app, uh, find a person, maybe even a random person, just, you know, as a habit, check out their um, information that they've written about themselves, uh, their location, maybe title, that kind of stuff. Yeah. And uh, I think that AppSidex being an application, um, well, there's a question, do you need a dedicated app for that? And I believe that having it as an app, uh, in particular, the way AppSidex is implemented, uh, is just a more fun and engaging way to learn about the colleagues, 
uh, then when, when compared to things like Google Doc or even a spreadsheet yeah. uh, with no images, no maps, and this is just a cool thing to do. Yeah, I think especially in a remote setting, you know, it has to happen that you somehow have to meet people because otherwise you only meet people when you know you're, you know you're working with them or you end up on a project together. But otherwise, sometimes you spend you know six months and you've never talked to a particular person. And yeah, and that uh, maybe this app, you know, in my opinion, this app completely solves that because how, how I would use it is I would go to the app, check someone's profile out, and I'll be like. Hey, I think we have a common interest there. So maybe I can, you know, just shoot them a casual message on Slack. And I think that's something that people could definitely benefit from. Uh, Absolutely. It's, it's, it's just so great to hear from you this, you know, user adoption. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of validation right there, you know, it's like, yeah, it's yeah, 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 exactly. yeah. So could you describe, you know, Shiny Router for me and what problems, you know, it solves, solves for our Shiny in general? Yeah. So, we have this Shiny framework, which is a great tool for creating dashboards and web apps. But as we know, it creates single page applications. And if you're trying, for example, to follow the JavaScript world, I say trying because it's literally changing every day. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think there's a this general sort of shift from single page uh, apps to multi-page apps with extremely powerful and popular frameworks rising out of that. Um, and, and we can't really have multi-page apps in Shiny, but Shiny Router is trying to bring us as close as possible to that. Um, the way it's implement, the way it works, uh, I'll be talking on a Rhino example, for example, because uh, I'll be explaining on a Rhino example because this is the way I personally built the app. So the way it works is, um, every page has to be a Shiny module. And the developer is able to define upfront the router route mapping uh, so that the Shiny app is aware what to render uh, based on the current URL. And it, it works pretty intuitively and pretty easy and nicely. Mm, I won't dive uh, too deep into the features of Shiny router because I encourage you to check out the demo and play around with it and read the about section, which also highlights the core features of the of the app. Well, not you, obviously. I can see that you have adopted the app, but whoever's listening to this. Um, however, I uh, still want to highlight probably one of my favorite features of the app uh, is the 404 page. Yeah. Uh, and this is this is the thing that you never knew you needed unless you have it, sort of. Yeah. Uh, with this routing thing, it's so great that Shiny Router takes this headache away from the developer. Uh, for example, when the user is trying to access the page that is not defined in the app, the Shiny Router will make an automatic redirection to the 404 page. Uh, and the, the coolest thing about it is that this page is as customizable as any other page. And you can put whatever content you want on there that is specific to your company, application, any, any, anything you need. Uh, and you can get creative with it as well, I'm assuming, because a lot of people have those creative 404 pages, you know, it's, which is so much in line with the brand. So I think that flexibility definitely adds to a lot of the benefits. Absolutely. I think that 404 page is sometimes like a brilliant way to express the creati creativity and overall vibe of the company. Yeah. Like, we, we all know those 404 page uh, of GitHub, for example, uh, signature one even, I would say, and yeah. a couple of other examples. Um, yeah, but besides that, Shiny Router also exposes several functions to the developers, uh, like route link, for example. So I'm able to define anchor tags with links that would just redirect me to the uh, other page of my application without reloading the page, which is which is important because by default, if I remember correctly, anchor tag, it would reload the page. Yeah. Unless you are linking to an ID on the page. Yeah. And this is cool. Also, what's cool is that there is a bunch of functions that allow you to control the um, current page programmatically, for example, you can just uh, use the Shiny Observe 
And inside that, you can check for certain events like a button click or something, and you can change the page programmatically, which gives a lot of a um, lot of control for the developer over the overall uh, user flow, user experience sort of flow through through, through the application. Yeah, I think uh, personally, I have experienced this as well, you know, where we would be building an application. And since the idea is that Shiny is a single page application, we, you know, approach it that way. You know, we have to squeeze everything in one page. And after a while, it would start to look cluttered because, you know, you have no other way to, you know, the place to, you know, put the other features in. And I think the this kind of solves that problem because then you can share the links for the specific pages. And I think that also you know, brings more power to the user experience and at the same time brings the developers a lot of flexibility and control. So I yeah. think, uh, yeah, I think that's a, that's a great uh, feature overall. Absolutely. So the decluttering the UI of a Shiny app is like a huge challenge and Shiny Router helps with that. Yeah. Uh, also, what makes it slightly better than the tab set that we have in Shiny by default is that it the Shiny Router is sort of agnostic of the UI. It gives you a lot of freedom in the way you can create your UI. It doesn't have to be a tab set. It can, it can be anything. It can be yeah. uh, a sequence of buttons that upon click on each, uh, the page is changing. And this was one of my like, shadow goals of this, uh, of this project to make this shiny app look not like a shiny app. Yeah. <laughs> you know, not with a sidebar layout and bootstrap and the, I think that, that's that the know. goal at Absalon itself. You know, we always try to make the shiny apps not look as shiny apps. And I think this would definitely, this this definitely helps. At least I am definitely going to try this. And I really want to because I can see a few applications I've worked on that I can definitely improve with it. So I can already see some use cases. And now that there are use cases, I want to ask you, you know, in your opinion, what would be the limitations of shiny router? and what are we, you know, uh, what can we see from the package in the future regarding those as well? Um, right. So when you're working with China router, it's very easy to forget that what you're having is actually a, still a single page application. It's not a multi-page application. And the developer has to be really careful with the amount of pages and the content that is being put into the app. Um, the, th the thing is that Shiny Router wraps all pages that are defined in the app into special Shiny Router div element. And then each page that is not active, it has a visibility hidden CSS property on it. And this allows for switching between, between views, basically. Um, it's good for user experience because the change is on the client side uh, on the CSS level, and it allows for really smooth page transitions. You don't have to wait the round trip from client to server, from server to client to render the UI, for example. Um, however, it also puts a lot of responsibility on the developer, as I said, because all of those pages, they are rendered upfront. When the app just starts, all pages are rendered. Uh, and this is a typical trade-off, I would say, between the app time, app loading times, uh, like first contentful page, some, things like that, and the overall smoothness of user experience. Yeah. Uh, in, in this particular case of AppSodex, uh, for example, I deliberately decided not to come up with any solutions uh, for the browse page. The browse page is the one where you see all the people uh, because it just makes sense in this particular case. When the user just opens the app, uh, in the background, the data is being fetched, then the grid of people is being rendered. And while that is happening, the person is seeing load and spinner. Yeah. Uh, and it's also important here to, it's just a, best practice of building apps. If something's going on in the background, just provide your user with some feedback so that they know that the app is not stuck and they don't have to reload it just to yeah. repeat all the process over and over again. Um, and in this case, it, it just makes sense. So the user is seeing that something's loading and then the browse button becomes enabled and they are able to smoothly go to the grid of people. Uh, it wouldn't make sense 
uh, for example, I made everything available, I made the button available at the beginning, then the user clicks the button and then they have to wait. Yeah. So it, it was kind of a choice here. However, the about page uh, is not really that important for the user, user flow. Uh, it also contains three GIFs which take a lot of loading time. They each weigh more than two megabytes, for example. And there's absolutely no need to load them up front. And in this case, it can be solved by adding the display none CSS property. And the way it works is thanks to the original Shiny logic. So Shiny simply ignores anything that has display none yeah. to, to optimize its behavior. And also HTML itself uh, treats it very nicely. So a combination of display none of the entire page uh, and laser loading on, on the GIFs allowed for, I don't know, like five, six seconds uh, time reduction of uh, app awesome. loading. Yeah, and, that's, that's, and, that's a good trick. Yeah, yeah, thank you. And again, because Shiny Router exposes some of its functions to the developer, I'm simply able to, so there's an observer that checks for currently active uh, page based on the URL. Um, and whenever the about page is active, I programmatically change CSS properties to make it uh, visible. And that's yeah. all. Uh, should this be uh, updated in the Shiny router or not is a big question to me. Uh, the way it works as of today is that each page that is not currently active has a visibility hidden property to it instead of display none. And I think this is a good default behavior uh, because visibility hidden is much less disruptive than uh, display none. Yeah. And it does not interfere with how Shiny works and how render UI function, for example, works. Uh, However, it would be a good move to maybe expose a parameter in a function or something like that to allow people who acknowledge the, the potential problems to allow them to optimize their performance by using this display none. Uh, in my particular case, it worked nicely, uh, but I can easily see situations where it would break things. Something won't render, uh, things like that. But there is you know, scope to probably add something like this in the future it's not maybe it's not set in stone but we'll find a way to you know maybe add it in some format some parameter or something that could help the people or you know we can just you know give a warning about it as well i think but there is a lot of scope in improving the package from what i can see or it's already so powerful and it's so flexible so i think in general people can start you know using it right now but i feel there's always scope for improvement you know it's the uh, eighty percent done, twenty percent is always left to do. So it's kind of like that. Always about software. So I think uh, all I all I have to say is this is an amazing app and this is an amazing package. Thank you so much, Pavel, for you know let, letting me pick your brain about these and with all these questions. And you know, I think I really enjoyed our conversation today. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Deepanj.